Hello everyone, Loco Force here, and welcome to a review I'm actually quite excited about. It's another HO Gauge European model, uh, this time by Zhuef. The last one we did was by Roco, and it was an absolutely astounding model. So I'm hoping we can get the same uh, from Zhuef. Uh, I think this might be their slightly lower end range. Uh, this is part of the Zhuef Hobbies range, which is what that means there. Um, I don't know how to pronounce that in French. Lois, Loises, Loises, Baguette, I don't know. Anyway... Yeah, so I'm I'm quite excited for this. I have already taken it out of the box, and it, I I am already quite happy about it. But I'm uh, looking forward to taking a closer look. Um, so yeah, this is um, a UF uh, CC uh, seven thousand two hundred class. I believe the CC means Coco, or at least that's the French way of doing it. Because I know that they also have BB locos, uh, and this is in the green and silver of the SNCF fret livery, uh, which obviously that that means freight. Um, and we have two variants of this in stock. We've got this one right here, and then we've also got a Envoyage uh, livery one, uh, which I will put up now. And that is also a really nice livery. Uh, I probably should have brought both of them to review, uh, but I want to do this one because I'm more into freight myself. Um, but yeah, so both of these are available, um, and I'll let you know the prices. They'll be at the bottom now. Um, and uh, yeah, links will be in the description as always. And uh, yeah, let's get into okay, it. So if we take a look at the box first, we can see it's actually quite a nice box. Um, it's blue, which obviously differentiates from Hornby, which we're used to. Uh, also remember that UF is actually a Hornby international brand. Um, so um, Hornby's like, you know, the main uh, supplier of these particular models, um, which are now discontinued as far as I know. Um, but yeah, so we've sort of got this split between light blue and dark blue, um, which I assume is just the branding for the hobby range. Um, if I ever do get a chance to review a standard UF model, uh, maybe the boxing's a bit different. Um, but you can see down here, it says HO187, uh, and then we've got this big division here in red, and then we've got the type of the loco there. A nice see-through box, so we can actually see the model, uh, which is always quite cool. Uh, on this side, we've got a really cool-looking uh, diagram of the model. Um, and you can see the wheels are very, very close together there, which I find quite interesting because uh, they look very close together compared to your, your British uh, Cocos. Uh, on the back, uh, we've just got some stuff in French, um, detailed model for adult collectors. And we can also see over here, we've got the Hornby Hobbies logo, as like I said, it is part of the Hornby range. Uh, at this end, we've got a small diagram of the engine, which is quite cool. And then we've also got the product code, uh, which is HJ2606. And on this side, uh, we have a dark blue and uh, with the UF Hobbies logo. And then to take it out, uh, we just lift it up and we've got really nice packaging. Um, so it's nice and foam. I, I like prefer foam packaging over to what Hornby do. I think it's just a lot, it's much better for presentation, I would say. Uh, and then we get this bit out here and then now it's just the same as your standard Hornby packaging. You slide it out, uh, you pop this bit off and um, as usual it is covered in a protective wrapping which is obviously always very helpful um, and make sure the model stays in good condition and uh, here we are so yeah, let's get a look at this because i'm oh look at this it's such a nice looking model so let's take a closer okay, so look. starting from the front we can see there's a very very sort of distinct uh, profile to this uh, type of engine and it's something that's quite common along a lot of um european engines of this era um but we've got sort of the cab windows are sort of like bending forwards, if you get me. I think British trains, you know, it'd sort of be the other way around, maybe. Um, but yeah, it's a very cool design. Um, so yeah, let's just get looking at it. Um, so at the top here, we've got the horns. Uh, moving down, we've got a light here. Uh, we've got windscreen wipers, uh, an SNCF logo here, and then another molded bit of detail, which I think is like the sort of company logo that actually built the train it might be an older sncf logo that they've painted over uh, and then we've got the lights uh, which are surrounded with silver uh, with molded detail on as well which looks really good and you can see here yeah, we've also got the number which is 47 uh, 2010 uh, and then at the bottom we've got quite a detailed buffer beam um we've got the buffers there's a lot of wiring uh, for multiple unit working here uh, and then you can see there's some more bits of wire here and here and piping uh, and then there's also a hook there uh, sorry that's not very centered and uh, then at the front obviously you've got um the euro coupling um 
So that's just down at the front there. And you can also get that on some Backman units as well. And there's also a handrail along the front here, which I didn't notice there, it sort of blended in. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of moulded diesel on the front here. You can see there's also some steps or sort of, sort of walkways, which are very finely moulded. Um, and there's some more moulded detail on either side here. Okay, so looking at the side, you can see we've got a very distinctive livery here. It's quite striking. Um, green, white and silver. And starting from this end, uh, there's a lot of uh, printed detail around the cab. We've got various numbers here. I assume this is cab end number one or un in French, I guess, if we're being technical about it. There's another printed logo down the bottom. All of these are legible um, for people who have working eyes, which I do not. And you see there's silver handrails around the door, a silver handle as well just there. And then there's a cab window up top here um, with a more molded detail around it as well. There's a bit of a lip up the top there. Uh, there's another handrail here, uh, a bit more walkway here. And the sort of the beam, the, the, the chassis, sorry, uh, is also very well molded. You can see there's a lot of molded detail uh, all the way along here. Uh, as well as many, many decals. Um, so it's very detailed for the £135 we're currently selling it at. Uh, the bogey is also, as it seems to be of European models, uh, incredibly detailed. There's a lot of detail on that. Um, very, very impressive. You've got steps here, you've got springs, lots of wiring, axle boxes, more springs. I guess you could probably have some of that in different colours uh, to make it more realistic. But again, it's 135 quid, and I guess this is sort of their sort of um, railroad range, if you get me. Um, but it is more expensive, obviously, because it's from Europe. Um, so you've got this green section here. Uh, you see 472010, very finely printed there. Uh, and then moving further along, we, of course, have the white section with a very well-printed uh, fret logo. Uh, and you can see more moulded detail here. And there's also ribbing uh, all along uh, this portion of the engine. Down the bottom here, you can see we've also got um, separately fitted parts on the chassis. We've got various uh, electrical boxes, fuel tanks, some of which is actually uh, painted in different colour. You can see just here, there's a red bit. Uh, I think that is actually where the fuel gets pumped into. Uh, so that's very cool. So you don't really seem to get that on a lot of the Hornby stuff uh, around that price anyway. Uh, some more printed detail just here, uh, which honestly I can't make out, unfortunately. Uh, it's black on dark grey, so quite hard to see. It's a very cool logo here. Um, I don't know if that maybe has some significance in France or if it's actually a named loco, um, but I can't quite make that out. Um, but there's a cool line here, a little bit of heraldry, uh, which is very cool to see. Um, and yeah, a lot of detail on this side. Uh, we've got more decals down there. We've got an SNTF logo here. And we've got a lot of grills and vents, which look really, really nice, I must say. Um, very well done there. Uh, and then you've got the sort of striking angle, like all of this is slanted and it looks really, really cool, I think. Um, and it's been very well replicated here. Uh, cab end number two, uh, obviously you've just got the two. Um, and then it's the same, you've got the silver handrails on the doors, uh, the steps, very well detailed bogey. And then that area around the top of the cab there. You can look at the top of the loco. We can see there's also a lot of detail here. We've got a lot of venting along the side here, which is very well molded. I can't see any molding or paint uh, issues for that matter. Got a couple grills here. Uh, you can't make it out on camera, I don't think, but there is actually fans. You can just about see there. There are fans underneath uh, the grills there, which also look very good. You can see the handles where you could pull them out for maintenance. Uh, and there's the horn on the cab end number two there as well. Uh, you can also see the exhaust vents here and here, um, and again, plenty more moulded detail along here, um, along both sides of the roof, which is really, really so cool. Far, I'm very impressed with this loco, um, so let's hope it holds up on the test track. Um, but yeah, very, very cool looking engine. If I was doing European, um, I would get one of these myself. Uh, again, it's 135 quid, so it really isn't that badly priced. Uh, and the other one, um, the price uh, I mentioned earlier, hopefully, in editing. Uh, and it will be in the description below as well, of course. Um, so, yeah, every time I see these European models, I start thinking, oh, I wish I was modelling European. Because the, the quality and the detail um, really, really is good for the price that they are. Um, so it is just a very, very, very cool model. So let's get it down to the test track. Okay, so we're now down here on the layout. Uh, it is looking very cool. Uh, no issues getting on the track. Uh, obviously, it's just bogeys, so there's no difficulty there. I don't really have anything with Euro couplings other than my TFW 170, um, so I'm not really going to run this with anything. Um, 
But yeah, now let's get some running in. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's got directional lighting, um, so I'll show you that as well. In so just a here's second. the lights on the back. You can see really nice red lights there. And in the opposite direction, you've got the lights on the front. So very, very cool. So, a uh, very nice and smooth runner. It's not making any noises. It's not derailing or anything over the points. Um, the lights look really, really cool. Really, really smooth. Um, I, I do wish I had some coaches for it to pull, um, but maybe in the future I'll get some more Euro stuff. Um, but we'll see, we'll see. So very, very cool engine. I'm very happy with it. I think this is really awesome. Um, and like I said, uh, we've got a couple of these green ones, then we've got a couple in the uh, more... Uh, passenger oriented uh, en voyage livery and links to both of those will be in the description so thank you very much for watching uh, remember to like and subscribe uh, to the rms channel uh, and also of course the loco force channel and uh, yeah i'll see you in the next video goodbye for now